So here is the radio, guys. I am geeked. I, I love looking at it already. Um, it came with a little instruction booklet, you know, with a bunch of um, details. They have been really good at explaining things super, super detailed. They also send you a link to your email, your purchase email, with the same exact thing with the uh, actual clickable links with all the, you know, step-by-step -step tutorials that they created, which are awesome, awesome, awesome. That's a great thing to do. Um, you know, here's your look at it. This is in the box here, uh, kind of opened up a little bit. It's very well packaged, came with the extra box around it and some foam. But there's my hand, as you can see. I, I have large hands, and this thing looks great. I love everything about it. Um, I'm just super excited. I'm super, super excited. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to just jump right into taking out that old one so we can get prepared to install this new one. And once we get back to here, I'll show you all the harnesses and everything. This is just kind of a look of the actual overall unit. All right, guys. So now that you're inside your truck here, you're going to need to disassemble all of this to get to this. Now, I promise you, this is not hard. Literally, all I'm going to be using today is a pry tool and a screwdriver. Now the screwdriver has a Phillips and it also has other adapters because you're gonna run into some other um, bits that you're gonna need to use other than a Phillips, but you're not gonna need much. You're gonna need a T20 Torx and a Phillips in um, most situations here. To start off with my setup here with the shifter, you need to remove this assembly to get to even start removing this assembly. Now it's not much, like I said, so we're gonna dive right in. First things first, you're going to come in here and you're going to take out your little, uh, whatever you want to call this thing, a couple or not a cup holder, a coin holder, a, you know, and we're going to go from there, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And you're going to access your two fill up screws here. You're going to want to undo these screws here and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now you got those removed. Um, good little rule of thumb is to keep everything organized. You can take like the covers or anything like that. Um, and just put the screws inside that. So you kind of know like what screws went behind what cover. Uh, next is you're going to take this plastic piece here, or not plastic, well, it is plastic, but this chrome piece, and you can pop it up using like a pry tool or something like that. And you're gonna work your way around and you really wanna work your way all the way around this. Do not start at one edge and just pull. Um, never do that with things like this. I'm gonna open up my glove or my center console to give me some more room and just working my way around doing all this with one hand guys just to showcase the simplicity of this keep working around and once you kind of feel that you popped them all up you can start you know using your hands and you'll see it's slowly but surely it's all really coming off and it's gonna fight you but that's good old uh clips that chrysler loves to use I guess I should say RAM now because I don't know if they're even a part of them anymore. But now this is off and we're going to work our way to the next step. Okay, guys. So next, after you've done that, you can now work your way around and just pry this entire piece up. It's very easy to do. Actually, I didn't require much pressure at all to do that. And I can lift up and out. And whenever you're pulling things, guys, always make sure... And in this case, there isn't, but just make sure you're not hitting any wires or pulling too hard on any wires or anything because you don't want to break or damage anything or rip wires out. Um, so now that's out the way there. And now I'm going to be able to start working on the actual assembly up here. This is all out of my way. You're all safe. Um, you, know, you can get to look in there and see how everything's looking now. But the next step to the puzzle is up at the top here is a little panel here that you you can lift up and now you're going to see that you got two t20 torxes right there go ahead and unscrew those okay so now we got those two torxes out the last one is going to be in this area here um depending on what your truck is you might have a, a different style where you pop a clip and then there's a torx behind it in this truck style here i'm going to pull this out set this off to the side and if you can look in there, way in there, is one more. You're going to want to unscrew that one too. All right, guys. So now that you got those off, I already started this process, but I'm going to show you what I did so you can see. 
I went down here with my hand and I pulled here while using my pry tool at this corner and I heard a pop. Did the same on that side and then I worked my way around. It's gonna take some tugging, but then you will actually be able to release this whole system here. And now that you see I have it out, you can look up underneath and there's harnesses and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and unclip all the harnesses that are holding this in place and then you should be able to release this completely. So as you saw in the picture, five very easy to remove harnesses. Here, 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 and here underneath. And now I have the entire plastic bezel off. So we are going to put this to the side. We'll continue removing the radio. And um, now once you get to this part here, you are actually gonna need a few more tools. I apologize. We're gonna need some sockets here. I'll get that socket out. I'll tell you what size and I'll show you how to unhook this. But keep this in hand because you're going to need to swap some pieces over to your new plastic uh, surround that came with your radio. And as well as some, um, you know, certain controls and things like that and um, that all that good stuff. But we will get all this figured out as soon as we get this completely out. All right, so now we're here to remove the radio. I got my little socket wrench and my seven millimeter socket. I'm going to just loosen and take out these four bolts all around this edge here. These four. And what that's gonna do is allow me to fully take out the unit. And once we get them out, I'll show you what it looks like behind. Okay, so now you have your four screws taken out there. You can just grab this. It's nicely held in and it comes out very easily. And as you can see, we have all of our harnesses and stuff in here that we need to take off. And then we will have fully exposed our radio here. And um, we're going to get to the fun part. So let's go ahead and just unclip all these clips here. Nice job, guys. So there it is. You have it out now. All our clips are removed. And just for you guys who might need some help on this one here, all this is is something that you just need to, when it clicks in, you just pry up on this a little bit here, pushing in, and then it will actually come right out. It's not something you take out in whole. You push up, and this lever actually spins up and then it easily slides itself out. So pretty easy to do, guys. Sometimes it can be a pain if you never came into these before, but now that we got this all out, let's go ahead and look at what steps we have to do to integrate all of our systems into our new radio. Okay, guys, so now we have both units out front here. You can see this is my stock setup to the new setup. Um, this kit comes with a ton of things uh, I love about it is just because they gave you every option. If you had the manual, you got the auto like I have. If you had the floating dash, you can do that. Or if you have the center console dash with the shifter like I do, they come with this little piece here that uh, they even come with screws to screw it in. It actually lines up in here and I could show you, I'll show you better when the truck. So it replicates this system here. So when I go to put it back all together, it'll be nice and clean and it would just look good. Um, so now all I have to do is take the certain things out that need to go in, which you can see. So these two pockets here, I need to take these out, take these out, put them in there. Uh, my vents, I need to take my vents out, place them in there. And all this stuff is doable. Oh, and also this here, my center column here. I need a place in there too by spinning it around and you're going to get access to your panels back here. Like I said, it comes with a bunch of screws and you can reuse screws or whatever you'd like, but you just need to work your way around. And all it is, is these things are held on by Phillips screws and it's self-explanatory guys. They're going to go right back into the holes that are already there. I'm going to do these all and I will take you back and we'll show you what this new system looks like. Okay guys, so the first one I swapped over, right here to here. You can see the rest is still empty. I just reused the screws. I got them in there. Make sure that fitment is nice and flush like it is. It looks great. On to the next one. All right guys, I know you're making light work of it and me. 
Next I took out was my middle piece here. So with this one, uh, those are the four black original screws. I used the four stainless screws that came with uh, taking that one out to hold this into the bracket, then use the originals to mount the bracket and lift up and check. And there it is, a flush look. On to the next. Next, my little four wheel drive shifter, four original screws swapped on. Clean look. All right. Okay, so now I have all my pieces off. I took both vents off. And as you can see, here it is. For the vents, you're gonna need your T20, just one T20 on each. And then you're gonna have these little clips all along the edge that you just pry off right here and up here. And that will release it and you get it back in. Let's go for the grand finale flip. And there it is, just like that. This thing is completely swapped over. All my factory stuff, all my clips and harnesses I can clip back into. It looks great, guys. It looks fantastic. Now, for the part, um, if you need it, like I have left over this is the manual that I didn't need for my manual uh, vent. I don't have that at auto vent. But if you have the setup like mine, you're gonna need to install this. As you can see, coming around, flipping it up like that. It's got the little hole that lines up in here. So flip it back around, push that in, make sure it's all clipped in real nicely and sitting good. And then you got your two screws here that you can use to screw it down with Phillips. Okay, as you can see, all flipped over from the back here. There's my two gold Phillips screws, flipping the unit back over. Now we are all connected again. So this is actually gonna clip in and give a nice cleaner finish once we get it clipped in there. But for right now, it's just kind of sitting like that. But as you can see, it's all connected. Got all my buttons up here. Uh, if you want manual adjustments, you can. Defrost, things like that. You uh, also have the touch screen in the inside, which I'll show you a little bit of once we get it connected. But now we got all our wiring here. So we're gonna take this system back out to the truck. We're going to look at what we need to connect and we'll go from there. Last but not least, guys, make sure you go around and take all your little white clip-in pins out. So that way, when you go to snap your new plastics back in, they'll snap in nice and easy. Also, don't forget your um, little harness holders here for your two screws that you're going to use to mount your plastics back on. Okay, guys. So here is a mess of wires. So I'm going to explain this to the best of my ability, but I will start off by saying it's not as hard as it looks. All these wires I connected, I reconnected everything and tested it to make sure it was all functioning properly, properly so I'm not giving you false information. It is everything worked perfect. My heated seats, my cooled seats, my backup camera. You know, by the way, I have a factory backup camera. It does function with this properly, immediate response. My hazards, my, uh, my venting, I mean, the door, opening the door, it all works. It all works perfectly. So starting off here, going through your wires, I have this wire here. This is the USB wire. This wire connects right into here. And then you have this wire coming out here. So this is the one of the wires that come with it. This wire is your antenna wire. This wire comes with it too. Connect it into this prong right here. And also guys, every prong that you connect in wire harness, whatever, will only connect to that specific one. Um, so there's no need to worry about anything like that. The only loose wire I have is this USB. I'm not going to run one to my glove box. I'm not gonna run an extra one. I'm just gonna leave it free. So that wire that came with the kit that fell down is loose. I don't need that wire. You're going to discard these two here. These are not doing anything. Um, I, I don't need these at all. So these are antenna wires. So those are free. Then obviously your main harness clips in. Coming over here, like I said before, all the wires that connect in fit to specific spots. Here's your cannabis. This wire is connected to a large chunk of wire right here that has your main harness. Connect that in. Coming down here off the main there's one that goes in here. It's a black pin harness, that uh, multi-pin harness that's black and it's about, you know, a large rectangle shape. 
that one connects there. Right here is a light gray, possibly a blue. That connects there. Your white and your tan. Going off these wires, the tan is the USB that you're going to connect to that USB over there. As well as you have this extension if you were to connect that cable that like I said, um, I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't need an extra one. If I want to in the future, I can. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. So you got that. Then coming off here, this wire here connects into this pin connector over here. That pin connector right here. Like I said, again, it will fit to what it goes to. Coming down, connects into here, okay? So that's where that one goes. We've already discussed the board, the big board in there. Um, again, you're gonna have a bunch of wires left over because this, this thing has a ton of options. You can, um, you can add, you know, CD player, DVD player. There's tons of different wiring options you can do that, you know, just use, connect in and you connect your, RCAs and everything like that. So these are all auxiliary cables, like I said, and you don't need to connect these to anything. This is all auxiliary. So if there's some external things that you'll be connecting to, you can utilize these wires as well as like aftermarket backup cameras and stuff like that. Um, your video in right here is for your stock backup camera. You're, gonna, you're just gonna clip that in. It's gonna be the only one on this harness that will say video in on the tag. Click that one in there. Coming over here, this blue pin here, again, the only one it fits to, is the antenna for your uh, GPS. You do not need to put this on the roof or anything like that. I had it in the dash and it worked perfectly fine. I had no issues at all with the signal. Um, and then right here is the input for your antenna. And that's pretty much it, guys. There, you know, this wire here, I didn't need this one. It might be for the uh, the manual setup styles, but mine, I have nowhere to connect it to. I have no issues at all with my um, heating system. So pretty much after you get all those connected in, you're just gonna connect these two, like I said, to those two spots that I showed you, and then connect that main harness, and you're gonna connect the five pins down here. And that's it, guys. Everything else is connected and wired up. There's no wiring or anything that you have to do. Uh, just like they state in the video. So it really truly is that simple, guys. You just have to be patient and make sure everything you're connecting, you're properly looking at and making sure is, is all connected. Once we get it all back connected in there, I'm gonna set it up and I'm just going to, uh, before I connect it all back to the plastics, I'm just gonna test it and make sure it all works and show you guys what you should really test for to make sure everything's functioning properly. Okay, guys, I have all my harnesses and everything from the truck connected back in, my USB, my radio antenna, um, everything. Everything's connected, my main harness, all that. So we're going to set this thing up now, and we're going to just turn on the truck. I'm just leaning it up right now. I don't have it fixed into a good position or anything, but we're going to turn the truck to the on position. As you can see, I saw my neutral light turn on there. Um, there it goes. All this stuff is changeable, guys. I'll drop a video on all the features and stuff once I really dive in and learn how to use this thing. This thing is a massive computer system pretty much um, in your truck now that allows you to do a lot of stuff. Um, we're going to test all these features here. So my hazards. My HVAC off oh that's temp we don't need that we'll turn the fan as you can see that's all working turn that off come down here touch that and let's let's turn it back on shall we i got all this set up ac and heated seats work the truck does not um allow you to run these with your with your truck uh your truck off you need to have your truck in the uh running you know it can't be in the on position and work um my z link's all set up so it's probably gonna try to bluetooth right to the truck so as you can see guys it's it kind of cut me off for a quick second there while i switch into uh apple carplay but as you can see guys it's all connected up 
Um, I got my factory navigation set up and factory nav clicks right on guys. It's super clean and quick. Um, as you can see in the video right here, right now. Uh, so just so we know everything is working properly, let's go ahead. We're, we're in the on position. I don't know if this is leaning on my shifter or not. It is leaning on my shifter. So we're in the on position, clicking in reverse. And as you can see, my backup camera pops right back on. So put it back in park and lean it back up and we're good to go. So we now know that everything's functioning properly. So that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and just start clicking things back in place. Okay guys, so you should have gotten it all clipped back in. A quick little test and yeah, it's clipped in nice and tight. And that is the look so far and I'm loving it guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and now work my way back uh, to build this thing back together. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to throw in, now we don't longer have any of those torques at the top, so we're gonna throw our one in right here on this hole here. All right, so now I got my torques back in there, my little uh, rubber grommet, and now I'm going to put on my uh, surround cover here and I'm gonna use my two Phillips screws down at the bottom there to screw it back in. Like so, I have my two Phillips back in. Now I can put my little rubber um, slide back in here, some way, somehow. And then, not putting it in backwards per se, but you know, put this in, <laughs> and then we will go to clip on our chrome plastic piece around the shifter. Okay, so we got our rubber cover back in there. Take our chrome plastics here. It only can go one way. So if it put it around and you just feel like it doesn't seem to fit right, spin it back around and keep giving it shots so you get it. And then just push in, work your way around. You don't gotta push it all the way in at first. Keep working around, keep working around in there. And you're slowly gonna start biting and everything's just gonna click right back in, nice and snug. And just like that, guys. You got a brand new 12 plus inch screen. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Just comparing sizes there, guys. There's the old 8.4 to your new Tesla style radio screen here, guys. I absolutely love the look. It looks fantastic. So let's go ahead and truly, I've been running this thing a little bit with uh, my battery off. So let me just turn the truck on. Dash starts right up, no lights, no nothing. just so you guys can see. So this is the first time firing it back up after I unplugged it and plugged it all back in. So you guys can just kind of see how long it takes to fire it up off a fresh boot up. It's been about 20 seconds so far. And there you have it. So that's a fresh, fresh, fresh restart, uh, unplugged and all. I don't even know if it, yeah, it doesn't even have my phone saved in it. So it's this is freshly restarted up. And as you can see, everything's functioning here. So let's go ahead and go back uh, radio wise, waiting for my phone. Oh, so it did pair it back up. Okay, well, that's good. So it's waiting to connect to my phone now. Um, I think I have my Bluetooth off. So we'll see what, see if I can turn that on. While that's doing its thing. Um, navigation. It's got tons and tons and tons of different maps, guys, that you can use. You can go through all the settings and you can legit, I mean, that's why I'm going to dive in here and really, really understand and learn all I'm going through with this whole system here. Uh, it has the DVR set up. So you can also monitor and see a ton of different things. Like I, I can see my RPM levels there. 
which is a live, live reading, as well as speedometer. Um, just tons of different things, guys. Tons and tons of different things. So um, just to confirm, show here, my steering wheel controls work. Um, oh, here we go. Let's show you this. My heated seats. They fired on. They stayed on. Heated steering wheel. And all that. But other than that, it even comes with a little clip that you can see in the videos that they have on the unit itself to just showcase that you can watch stuff while you're doing it. Wi-Fi and all that stuff as well. Um, and it's just a ton of stuff, guys. It's a ton and ton of stuff. I'm so excited to really dive in and use this product. But for right now, it it's awesome. I love it so much. It's super fast. Um, oh, I just really cannot wait to get up in here and really start looking at this thing. Because, yeah, I still need to get my Bluetooth turned on to do that. But oh, I just cannot wait. It's I'm so excited. It looks so good, guys. You can just see how fast... It saves itself. I don't even know how to use it yet. It's not support split screen mode. You got multiple apps you can run. I'm really going to dive in, guys. I'm going to drop an awesome video on how to use this product and, and everything and all the features involved. But just let's just showcase how beautiful this thing looks in the truck. guys there it is um i've i've had the ua4 system in my cars for the past uh, four years now I, I you know you know you remember me from the 200 i upgraded the ra4 i love it it's it's always been a fast system i've never really had issues with it um it's really just it was missing that key feature i needed and i needed apple carplay i needed proper navigation i drive a lot i go places and having navigation and having carplay uh, it, it just makes things cleaner, easier, more attractive while you're driving. Um, it, I just love it. So to be able to adapt that feature into my truck now that I went from an RA4 with and having such a massive screen, guys, I love it. I, I just love it. I'm so excited. I Like I said, I'm going to be coming back with um, absolute you know features videos on this radio. Uh, tips, tricks, all those things. I'm really going to learn this system. I'm going to bring you guys tons of info. Um, if you haven't already, please check down below. There's a link down below to Auto Tech Pro. Sunny was awesome, guys. The response time from these guys was great. Um, everything in between to all the detailed instructions and help that they can get you through with this product because they know, they understand you're going from your standard, very easy to adapt to system in the RA4 to a much more integrated and intelligent system. But at the same time, you're excited, you want to get in, you want to start messing with stuff. There's certain things you got to be really careful about and you want to learn about before you just jump in with this system. Um, they're great with help. They're great with step-by-step -step tutorials on what you need to do. Like I'm going to jump in right now and learn how to do my Fahrenheit on this. Um, there's just tons and tons of things you can do with this radio, guys. Feel free. Check out the link below. Check out AutoTech if you're just looking at this video to see what a Tesla screen looks like in a, in a vehicle. Uh, they make tons and tons of screens for multiple different vehicles, and uh, I hope to do many more of their products. I hope to uh, inspire my friends to get them these for their cars, and we install and do shoot videos on that as well. Um, I'm just super excited, guys. It was a much-needed upgrade, and I'm still speechless just staring at it right now. It looks so good. Um, 
I really hope this video helped you guys. I hope it was um, an eye opener and, a, you know, just making you get pushed to just go do this. Just do it. Just do it for yourself. It's awesome. It's a must do mod. Um, and until the next one, guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below and peace. Thank you.